Hi, I'm Jeff from Grody. We're going to go over the assembly of a sauce pump. Here's the pump disassembled, and here are all the parts. So you have the float of her, you have the hairpin clips, you have the lower discharge valve assembly, you have the pin, you have the piston, you have the cylinder, you have the lock for the lower discharge assembly, you have the cap, you have the housing for the ball and spring housing and cap. You have the three wing nuts, you have your anti-vibration waters, there is three sets. You have three O-rings this size, you have one this and three at the larger size. You also have your pump base and then your air cylinder. If you notice here on the table, we have three O-rings that are one size. We have one that's an oddball size. We have three that are the same size. And then we have another one that is for the insert. How we grease these is I usually take all of these together so that I only get my hands dirty once. And I take grease in my hand. I take grease like that. I put it like this and I'm going to smear this so that I coat all sides of the O-ring. Then I'm going to separate those out. The easy way to find that short one is that way, is to pull on it. And then I'm going to lay them out. Okay, the first part we're going to assemble is the lower ball and spring uh, assembly. The proper way to put the spring in is the spring is cut and where the two pieces meet right here at the bottom. I'm going to take that and I'm gonna slide that, I'm gonna take my fingernail, spread it a little bit, and I'm gonna slide it on like this. Then I'm gonna turn the spring so it screws itself in. And then it'll snap into place. The reason we do this that way is the spring is captured in here, so it does not have to always come out when it's being cleaned. The next thing we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna grease these threads. What I want to do is I want to put a couple of dabs of grease like this on the threads. I want it at the beginning of the thread so when it threads on, it coats the threads from one side to the other. This first groove here is where one of the O-rings seat. So I need to make sure I got grease on that also. The first O-ring is one of these small ones. It is placed down inside. There's a flat area that it seats in and I'm going to make sure it's seated down in there. Then I'm going to place the ball inside. One of the things you want to look at when you place the ball inside is you want to turn it over. If the ball is protruding a quarter of an inch out farther than the surface, it needs to be replaced. It's too small. At that point, I'm going to take the spring. I'm going to set it up in this fashion. The reason I'm setting it this way is it lets the spring hang down so that when I place it on, it's hitting the center of the ball. Then I'm going to screw this together. Once I get about that far, I'm going to look down inside to make sure that the spring and the ball are in the correct alignment. And then I'm going to finish tightening it. What happens on most times is people feel it touch the O-ring and they stop. You need to tighten this until all of these threads are completely missing. Now I'm going to add this O-ring, goes here, this one goes here. Since this O-ring here has grease all the way around, once I install it, it won't fall out. Next, I'm going to install this into the lower body. One of the things I want to do is I want to put a coat of grease around that and around this surface like that. The reason is, is this piece slides into this one. And if I have grease on it when I assemble it, when I go to disassemble it, I won't have sauce that gets pushed up inside there. And then it's difficult to get apart. The O-ring, this O-ring is a little smaller than these in size. The smaller one goes here. And then I'm gonna run my fingers like this way to make sure that I've pressed it all the way into place. At this point, I'm going to add grease 
Again here, these are the threads. In like three places. I want to add it on the first couple of threads. When I thread it in, it coats these. Next is the piston. The piston gets these, two of these. Same thing, I'm gonna make sure they're on there. This last O-ring goes here, and that seals the bottom of the cylinder. Now we're gonna grease the cylinder. I'm gonna put a thick coat of grease on one side, like this. And on this side, I'm just gonna put a little bit right here because when I install this, this end is gonna be sliding over this O-ring. The reason I want this much oak grease up here is so when I slide the piston in for the first time, it coats that cylinder because that's your lubricant to run the pump before it gets sauce in it. So now we're gonna put the piston onto the pump. You have a through hole here uh, the common mistake everybody makes is they put that hole straight up. You want it to the side so that when I slide this on, that I can take this pin, put it in there, and then I can rotate it to the side, and it's going to slide in. If I turn it this way, it's going to fall out. It keeps you from damaging these two plastic tips that are on this pin. When you're installing this pin, if these plastic tips are missing, this needs to be replaced. Then I'm going to stand the pump upward. Depending on your sauce pump and how the hoses come to it, you can orientate this in this fashion with the hoses in line with the in inlet, or I can turn it to either side that way. Next, we're going to install an anti-vibration washer on the top first. That washer is a two-piece washer. If you notice, there's a coarse side and then there's a fine side on each one. You want the two coarse sides together so that the fine is facing out top and bottom. This is a toolless pump. You shouldn't have to use any tools to assemble it or disassemble it. Once I have the wing nuts snug, I'm gonna pull them down evenly so that this gap down here gets closed off. So I'm gonna turn one just a little bit until I achieve that. And once they're snug, that's it. If I turn one down all the way and tighten it first, it will cock the pump to one side or the other. So now we're gonna install the flow diverter. The flow diverter is only used when you have a standard insert. It has a cone on the top and then it's encaved on the bottom. The cone part goes towards the discharge valve adapter. And the clips go in to hold it in place. Now, uh, people ask me, should the clip go this way or should the clip go that way? It doesn't matter, it's your preference. This ring, like the other ones, needs to be coated on all sides. You're gonna stick it on like that and then you're just gonna run your fingers around till it falls into place and again, you're gonna push it down into place. Here we have a sauce insert that is a TPR style sauce insert. It means that this is a plate that drops inside and it is spring loaded. When you drop it inside, you're gonna press on it to make sure that it moves up and down. The other thing you're gonna note is that when you're assembling the lower discharge valve assembly, you are not going to install the flow diverter. This takes the place of this piece. We're gonna go over the anti-vibration washer 
because one of the things I need you guys to realize is you can't replace this with a lock washer. A lock washer will damage the top surface of this top plate and then later on you'll have an issue with the wing nut tightening it correctly. Like I said before, the anti-vibration washer has a coarse side and it has fine sides. The two coarse sides go together and then we're going to put it on there. When you tighten these, you got to keep in mind that it doesn't need to be super tight. It just needs to be snug, like I just did. And then when you go to unloosen it, it's going to snap. That snapping noise is what locks it into position. If you over tighten that, then somebody else that may take this apart may have issues getting it apart. This part here is called the sauce head. And you notice that this side is cut out. When I lay it down, you'll see that the top is all flat. One of the things you have to look at before you install the pump or the insert is that we need to look at this area right in here. We need to make sure that there's no gouge or chip or the plastic is tore in a burr fashion because the discharge valve assembly gets inserted from this side. The other point that we need to look at is this part right here. Need to check that the same way. Run your finger around it, look for a burr. That's where the sauce insert seats is in this little groove right here. That's where the O-ring will seat in it. So now we're gonna install the sauce pump to the sauce head. What you notice here in this is we have a key. As this protrudes up through there, there are two slots and the key would go on in that fashion. So you're gonna reach underneath push that up through. I'm going to lay my key on. I'm going to take my pump. I'm going to set it up on top. Now I keep pressure of the discharge valve assembly against the pump and then as I turn it, it should grab that part. And once I've got that part caught, I'm going to turn this all the way up. At this point here, it starts to get tight. We're gonna look underneath and we're gonna check this O-ring to make sure we're not cutting it. And then we're gonna orientate the pump in whatever which way you need it, make your connection to your inlet. So before I go to put install the insert, I rotate these in a way that uh, it makes it easy for me to install it. Uh, if you notice here, you got a lip on one side and it's flat on the other. This part here is what the insert sets on. This part is turned away so that the insert can come down out from underneath the sauce head. So to install it, we're gonna turn two of them so that this points to the center of the pump. And I'll do the same with this one. The rest of them will be the flat side towards the center of the pump. Then I'm gonna take the insert, I'm gonna put it up on an angle and I'm gonna push it in until it catches those. Once it's caught, I can take my hand, I can lift it up, and then I can turn the one closest to me in the same fashion which holds that insert up. So once I get them all turned in so they hold the insert, I'm gonna lift one up a little bit, not tighten it all the way. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna turn these two together until they both come up snug. Then I'm gonna look underneath and I'm gonna look to see that this insert is flat against the bottom of the head that I don't see. I can just barely see the O-ring. Once these two are snug, then I'm gonna move on to the other ones. I'm gonna raise this up, making sure that it's locked into the head, the insert, and then I'm just gonna spin this up. Get them all to the same tightness. Once we have these all up to the same tightness of the first two, then I'm going to pick any one of two that are across from each other, and then I'm going to snug those up, and I'm going to keep tightening these until I can't tighten them with my hands anymore. 